Previously, we've covered the stuff you need to know before getting started with Windows 365 and how it looks from a user's perspective. So for this part of the series, we will be looking at the provisioning of cloud PCs. If you missed the first part, there should be a um, link up here somewhere to the playlist. Seeing as Windows 365 business doesn't really have any configuration to it in terms of provisioning, this video will be focusing on the enterprise flavor of Windows 365. We'll discuss how provisioning works, but for the most part, this will be a demo-centric video. I'll show you the setup of provisioning policies in a couple of different scenarios. I'll show you the setup of a VNet and some of the benefits there. I'll show you how to set up the Azure Network Connections or ANCs for Windows 365. And I'll also show you how to prepare for and provision a hybrid joint cloud PC. So there's a lot to cover. Let's get to it. Like I mentioned, Windows 365 Business doesn't really have any configuration that needs to be done in order to provision a cloud PC. But seeing as the step you need to take also applies to Enterprise, uh, I'll show you that now. So from the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, I'll select this user here and I'll go to Licenses and Apps, select the Windows 365 license and click Save. And that's it. Now the cloud PC should begin the creation process. Like I said, that step also applies to Windows 365 Enterprise. Users need to have a license. But you can, of course, also apply a license through the group-based licensing, if you so please. Now, for the Enterprise flavor of Windows 365, you need a couple of more steps. First of all, you need a provisioning policy. This is created through a wizard in the Endpoint Manager Admin Center, and it dictates whether the cloud PCs will be Azure AD joined or hybrid joined, how the cloud PCs will be connected, what image to build your cloud PCs from, as well as a few other customization options, and which groups of users that should be included in the provisioning policy. If you opt for using a Microsoft Managed Net, it also allows you to select the region where your cloud PCs will be located. If you opt for hybrid joining or bringing your own VNet, you also need to select which Azure network connection to use. And the Azure network connection dictates in which resource group in Azure, the, the Azure parts of your cloud PCs will be placed. That will basically be just the network interface cards, uh, which VNet and subnet to connect the cloud PCs to. And in case of hybrid joining, the Active Directory domain name, username and password used for joining, and optionally the organizational unit or OU to place the computer objects in. With that out of the way, let's continue on with the rest of the demos. So first I wanted to show you just how to create a provisioning policy. So from our browser here, we'll go over to endpoint.microsoft.com. And from there, we'll head on down to devices and to Windows 365, to provisioning policies, and we'll create a new policy. So we'll call this just demo AAD for Azure AD joined. I'll opt for the Azure AD join here, as well as the Microsoft hosted network. And I will be selecting the European Union and region I'll leave automatic. That would mean it would balance between North Europe, West Europe, and so on. Single sign on, that's beautiful, let's use it. And then I'll hit next. And now I get the option to choose which image I wanna use. And the Windows 11 Enterprise Plus, the Microsoft 365 apps is a beautiful image, fits perfectly for my needs. So I'll just go on next. Configuration, I will leave it at English and I don't need any additional services, uh, meaning I won't need the <laughs> Windows Auto Patch, which is the only option here. I'll hit next and for assignments, I will add my group here. So let's use the, the Windows 365, Azure AD and Microsoft Managed Nets. And hit next and create. Now the provisioning policy is created and any users within that group I selected that has a Windows 365 license will now have their cloud PCs created. Now that we've done Azure AD joint cloud PCs on a Microsoft Managed Net, it's time to move on to Azure AD joint cloud PCs on your own VNet. And for that, you of course need to have a VNet. So in the Azure portal, I have already prepared a VNet for, for this scenario. 
And some of the benefits with bringing your own VNet is you can use your own DNS service if you have some kind of D DNS security appliance or whatever have you. You can use your own routing tables. So if you want to force traffic from your cloud PCs across a VPN link and down to the on-prem, or just use a VPN link to access stuff that's on-prem, you can do that with your own routing tables. And of course, you also have the option to create network security groups. So for this VNet here, you can see that I have customized my DNS servers. And if we head on over to subnets, you can see that I haven't done a lot here, but I do have one of my own security groups, which I have assigned to a subnet. So with the VNet ready, it's time to create the Azure network connection in order to make use of this VNet. So back to the endpoint manager, and then we'll go over to Azure Network Connection. Then we'll hit Create. And this time I'll use the Azure AD Joint. So I'll call this demo Azure AD ANC. And select the subscription where the Azure parts of my cloud PCs will be. Like I mentioned, that would be the network interface cards for your cloud PCs. So I'll put, so I'll put them in my 365 demos here. And for a virtual network, I will select the VNet that I just show you, and we'll go with the CPC subnet. Then I'll hit next and review and create. And as noted here, as part of this flow, the Windows 365 service is granted some permissions on your subscription, on the resource group and on the VNet itself. So that would be the network contributor, for example, on the resource group where your cloud PCs will be placed and on the VNet itself. So as soon as this network connection now is passed through all the checks, we should be able to use it in a provisioning policy. And once the checks are complete and it looks all good like it does now with checks successful, we can use that Azure network connection in a provisioning policy. So back to the provisioning policies tab and create a policy. Let's call this demo. Azure AD, bring your own VNet. I'll still use the Azure AD join, but at this time I'll select the Azure network connection. And from the network connection, I'll select the one we just created. Uh, still signals on, that's fine. Image, I'll use the same. Same goes for the configuration. Assignments, I will add my group here and select next and then create. So now any users with a Windows 365 license within the group I selected will have cloud PCs provisioned that are connected to the VNet that we saw in the Azure portal. And of course, they will also be Azure AD joined. Now let's move on to the hybrid join scenario. So for hybrid join cloud PCs, you will need an Azure network connection that specified the hybrid joining. So let's start there on the Azure network connection then we'll head on over to create, and this time well, let's use the hybrid Azure AD join. So we'll click that and give it a name, call this demo hybrid AAD. We'll select the subscription and we'll select the resource group. Again, this is for the Azure parts of your cloud PCs. And then I'll select my virtual network and the subnet, hit next. And here you need to specify some pieces of information about your Active Directory, meaning the domain name. Optionally, organizational units, I highly recommend you do so. And a little tip is that this is the distinguished name of the organizational unit, just the name would not suffice. You need the AD username for joining your cloud PCs to the domain, and that should be in the UPN format, and of course the password for that account. So I'll just enter my details here. And once that's done, I'll hit next and review and create. And then, of course, there will be another round of checks. And Windows 365 now will check, among other things, that the username and password that you specified does have the permission to join computers to the domain. And after a while, when the checks are complete, you can see that they are successful. And now, if you want to actually check what these checks are, you can simply click it here and you can see all the checks that the Windows 365 service went through. So I'm not going to cover these in detail, but there are a lot of checks. So if you've messed up somewhere, it will show up here. But nonetheless, we now have our Azure network connection for our hybrid joining. That means we can create a provisioning policy. So back to provisioning policies, 
create a policy, call this demo hybrid. Now we'll select the hybrid Azure AD join. Now we can see that you don't have the option anymore to use the Microsoft Managed Net. You will have to use your own VNet now. So I'll select the demo hybrid Azure AD join network connection that we just made. Hit next and all of these others are the same all the way up until assignments. I will add my hybrid group here, select next and then create. And now that we have all these provisioning policies, any users within those groups will have their cloud PCs configured. And if you're wondering what happens if you delete a provisioning policy that cloud PCs have been provisioned based on, well, you can't delete it. As long as the provisioning policy has at least one assignment, it can't be deleted. But if you remove all assignments, then the cloud PCs based on that provisioning policy will be placed in a grace period of seven days before they will be deleted. And once you have removed all the assignments, you can go ahead and delete the provisioning policy. And speaking of grace period, another way the cloud PCs will be placed in the grace period is if you remove the user's license. And you can shorten this grace period and end it manually if you so choose. Otherwise, like I said, it will be deleted in seven days. So that's the provisioning parts of Windows 365. Keen observers might have noticed that I didn't cover images, images in depth here. I will cover that later on in this series. So, you know, subscribe and all that. Stay tuned for part four, but thank you for watching. Hit that like button if you want and comment down below with any questions or feedback. Cheers.